mentioned earlier this evening that psychedelics played a role in human evolution. How so? Thank you for not groaning, those of you who have heard me explain this 18 times. Uh, because it may be my only crack at getting into the history books, uh, it, it, it seems to me clear, well, it seems to everybody who looks at the question clear, that the theory of evolution is handed a tremendous dilemma when it comes to human evolution. Uh, a planet of groundhogs, hummingbirds, and slime molds poses no problem to Darwinian evolution as modified by molecular genetics. We pose a problem, specifically our brain, and its doubling in size in less than two million years is very difficult for the theory of evolution to explain. And it's a, a particular embarrassment because that's the organ which generated the theory of evolution. <laughs> so it's like a real, a real rip in uh, the, the sail of the galleon of evolution. I believe, and everyone believes, that there must have been extraordinary selective pressures of a unique sort upon our early ancestors to have produced the human brain in such a short amount of time. And I think that the answer, and I don't want to go into it in detail tonight, but briefly, here's what it is. And it explains a lot about our sexuality and our politics and so forth. All primates, um, clear back to squirrel monkeys and like that, have what are called dominance hierarchies. We all know what this means. It means that the hard-muscled, long-fanged young males run roughshod over everybody else. The women, the children, homosexuals, the old, everybody gets their marching orders from the dominant males. This is true throughout the primates, and it is true of us as we sit here this evening. That's what's screwing up our politics and making us uh, you know, the situation with women and so forth and so on, and it can be argued to other social problems as well. I believe that psilocybin, uh, because it dissolves boundaries, uh, is uniquely positioned to mitigate against this tendency toward male dominance for a number of reasons. Uh, and when our remote ancestors moved in, out of the trees and into the grasslands, they encountered these mushrooms. And I think the great undiscussed frontier of evolutionary theory is the effect of mutagens in foods on human evolution. We, m most animals maintain a very narrow food menu to avoid contact with mutagens. We, when we were forced out of the arboreal canopy, we became omnivores. We came under nutritional pressure, and for a long time we were testing all kinds of foods, and that would have meant a very high rate of mutation through that period, and an acceleration in natural selection. And I think that, uh, that psilocybin, because it uh, improves visual acuity, would have given a leg up to predators and hunter-gathering um, proto-hominids. And so, in a sense, there was a period of time, perhaps as short as 100,000 years, perhaps as long as a million or more years, when uh, male dominance in our species was suppressed chemically by psilocybin in the diet. It was still there, <coughs> hardwired in the genes, but chemically suppressed by an orgiastic religious style that had everybody taking mushrooms at the new and full moon and then having sex in a heap, basically. This made it impossible for men to trace lines of male paternity. That's a consequence of an orgiastic uh, society. And a kind of paradise evolved. And it was during that paradisical interlude that language, theater, altruism, metaphysics, poetry, 
dance, uh, religion, all of the functions that we equate with unique humanness evolved under the aegis of a near symbiosis with, sim with psilocybin, mushrooms. And then, and this all was happening in Africa, then through climatic upheaval, drying of the African continent, the mushrooms disappeared and God forbid the old wiring reasserted itself. It must have been hell on earth. It must have been similar to what we're living through. It must have been an era of incredible brutalization when people stopped caring for each other. People stopped having group sex. They started fighting over women, fighting over territory, bashing each other's brains out, appointing leaders, uh, uh, developing weapons. The entire sick set of pathological institutions that leads to our dilemma was evolved in the wake of the invention of agriculture and the abandonment of nomadism and so forth and so on. And this is why I think we're so funny on the subject of drugs, because we are literally the children of a drug. There wouldn't be human beings on this planet had there not been this hominid mushroom interaction over a very, very long period of time. The reason we addict so easily to so many substances and the reason people destroy their lives with various addictions is we have an itch that we just can't scratch and we try everything and I maintain that you'll keep itching and you'll keep scratching till you come to this very narrow family of hallucinogens the tryptamine hallucinogens then the itch stops because you are restored to the archaic dynamic in which we created the most noble social systems that we have ever lived under. The archaic, nomadic, shamanic, goddess-worshipping world of the dawn time. And history is a fall away from that, exactly as these monotheistic religions uh, insist. The fall into history. And I see then this emergent end of the world post-history millenarian culture as an attempt to reconnect with that archaic authenticity that was the birthplace of intellect, of poetry, of beauty, of love, and of altruism. Okay.